Hi everyone, congratulations, you made it through week 10 of Introduction to Christian Ethics. I was going to do one last lecture um, to try to bring the course together. I will say a couple of things, but there's no time for a lecture. Nobody wants to listen to a 10 minute or 15 minute lecture the last two days of class. Um, so just let me uh, try to wrap a bow around the class for us. And then I'll say a few uh, words about your final project and your paper assignment. Um, so what we're trying to do in this course, if you remember the definition of Christian ethics at the uh, very beginning, is to uh, try to follow in the way of Jesus and the truth of Jesus in our personal ecclesial and public lives. What that means is that uh, Christian ethics is uniquely Christian. In other words, sometimes when we talk about ethics, especially when we talk about it in a cultural context, uh, we can think that Christian ethics is for everybody. And you can see, and some of you are writing books, uh, or not books, sorry, um, you're writing your papers on sexuality, that when the Apostle Paul talks about sexuality, say in 1 Corinthians 6, he ties it to something uniquely Christian in the sense that the Holy Spirit your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That's not true of those people who are not Christians. And so he's given a unique Christian motivation for um, your ethic. And so uh, what I want to say is that when we talk about following the way of Jesus and the truth of Jesus, what we try to develop was a thick Christian tradition um, that we could then look at what is, what are the teachings of Jesus? What was his manner? Uh, and then how did the uh, followers of Jesus uh, enact their theology and enact their, uh, his teachings in their own life, especially in the early church, and then, uh, and then later on as the church develops? And so that was the idea. So we looked at uh, several methods uh, of doing Christian ethics. We talked about moral norms. We talked about moral authority. Um, and then we looked at several methods. The first one we looked at was the Sermon on the Mount and how do we anchor ethics in Jesus, the largest block of Jesus' teaching. That's Glenn Stassen and David, David Gushy's work in Kingdom Ethics. And then we looked at a narrative method and we looked at uh, Richard Hayes' book, Moral Vision of the New Testament and his uh, kind of companion or cousin book uh, by Christopher Wright on Old Testament ethics and the Kingdom of God. And so um, we looked at the narrative method in uh, kind of how do these different authors that make up the writing of Scripture, how do they talk about what is motivating, morally motivating? How do they anchor their moral norms, their rules, their principles, their basic convictions, etc.? Um, and so uh, Hayes uses the idea of focal images, the cross, the community, and the new creation permeate the New Testament. We wanted to talk a little bit, or I tried to talk a little about, a bit about love and justice as well as focal images throughout the New Testament. And Hayes doesn't like that because not every book talks about love, but in the background, I think, of every book, there is the idea of God's love as a motivating factor for our, um, our ethics, and it is the great commandment. We didn't look at a specific text, but we did talk about the topical method represented it with uh, John Jefferson Davis or uh, the Feinberg brothers in Ethics for a Brave New World. And that is just kind of a systematic um, exploration of the scriptures to mine it for when it talks about a specific topic. And then, of course, we had to bring in something that has been missing in the modern period, and that is uh, perspectives uh, and methodologies from the margins. That is a survival theology or a liberation theology or an exilic theology will be different uh, uh, than a, let, let's say, when you're a theology when you're in power. And so that means that also an ethics, if it's the embodiment of a theology and its practical outworking, then a Christian ethic will be different in uh, with a survival theology or um, a exilic theology or liberation theology. And so we wanted to draw in some voices from the margins 
And remember always that I said at the beginning that one of the virtues, if you're going to anchor your ethics in the teachings of Jesus, uh, that one of the virtues of scriptural interpretation, of interpreting, interpreting those teachings, is the virtue of putting your best interpretation in a diverse community of interpreters. That way you try to um, do your best to overcome your biases. And then the second virtue that I talked about is hard work. And that's 2 Timothy uh, 2.15, do your best uh, to present yourself to God as one approved, a person who works hard and correctly handles the word of truth. And, uh, and so we want to, one, work hard at understanding Jesus' manner and his teachings, but also then we want to um, put that, our best work, into a community of diverse interpreters and develop a Christian ethic. So then we uh, turned in the back half, half of the class to some like a application of that. We did that with uh, race, which I gave a little more texture and try to um, try to do the method, use different methodologies throughout that conversation as we develop a Christian ethic. And then uh, you did that in your group project at the six different topics that we talked about. Um, and then you got to read each other's uh, and how they're trying to apply that, those methods. And now you're going to do that in your paper. And so your paper should look somewhat like your group projects. It's going to be a little different because um, I'm expecting the research to go a little bit deeper than your group project because you have more time and you're on your own to do it. And so I'm expecting it to go a little bit deeper in that sense and uh, for you to work hard at that. But it's going to reflect different methodologies and you, I would like you to identify those methodologies and it's going to uh, reflect kind of a, a contextualized, a texturized, a rich Christian ethic applied to whatever topic that you did apply it to. I want to say a couple of quick things about your topic so far, which I've been reading and they all look really good and really interesting. There's a number of you that are writing on sexuality. Part of it is uh, there's a number of you that are young life staff and this issue, these questions about sexuality are pressing in on you as staff and as an organization due to some of the, uh, the hashtag, you know, do better young life or something like that. Um, so uh, I want to encourage you in that. I want you to, this is not a requirement for your paper, but I think for your organization um, is to uh, work and collaborate together in your research or afterwards to get together and to talk about your research in such a way that maybe you could do something that might help benefit Young Life as an organization. Um, so some of you are, are focusing on politics, some on uh, different questions about race, uh, euthanasia, all kinds of uh, important topics. And so they look really good. I think you all have a great base for developing a uh, Christian ethic and doing your project. And hopefully, I, um, hopefully I've given you the tools for you to feel confident, not that you have every question answered, but as questions come up, um, that you know kind of how to go about beginning to look at those questions from a uniquely Christian perspective and a uniquely Christian ethic. So I, I do want to say thank you for uh, a great class. You all did uh, wonderfully well in participation. You did uh, really great in treating each other with respect in different forums um, and in the conversations in those discussion forums. So I felt like you did well on your assignment so far. Um, so I will be praying for you uh, to finish well, praying for you that God will give you the grace during finals week with all that you have going on. Remember that God's call is not necessarily to get an A. God's call on our lives as academics and as ministers and just as people is to, to do the best with what God has given to you at this moment. And sometimes that best may not look like your best academic quarter ever, but it is your best given COVID-19, given leading your community through um, the questions of race and racial justice that are pressing in, or just the reality that you all had, uh, a couple of you had babies during this quarter. So please give yourself grace in this, but also um, I'm really looking forward to what you might have uh, in your projects 
and uh, reading them. It's one of my favorite parts of the class is to read the project. So thank you for such a great class. Please don't forget to fill out your evaluations. They're really helpful for me and I do make adjustments. And this is the first time that I've taught this specific course online. So uh, any feedback will be welcome. Uh, that includes both positive feedback and also uh, negative feedback if you wanted a textbook change or, or something in a different format in the class. So um, yeah, please don't hesitate to do that. Please, if you have positive comments, please do fill out an evaluation. What I found is uh, when the flurry at the end of the quarter comes, uh, it's really the people who are frustrated that fill out the <laughs> the um the evaluation so if you like the class and enjoy the class and thought it was helpful please do fill out the evaluations um yeah i hope uh you have a great finals week and a great break before the fall quarter starts really appreciate you all and thanks for a great class have a great uh weekend and a good uh finals week